There's an argument that suggests Tony Ferguson might be the unluckiest fighter in the UFC. After five cancelled fights with Khabib to a handful of lengthy layoffs, the BJJ expert suffered one of the worst KOs in history last time out, and he's been speaking recently about what he sees as commentators bagging on it. Stay tuned as today we're discussing Ferguson's thoughts on Joe Rogan and Daniel Cormier. First up, let's look a little closer at Rogan and Cormier. Well, Daniel Cormier is one of the greatest greatest light heavyweights to ever step inside the octagon and was crowned UFC heavyweight champion, as well as light heavyweight champion during his stint in the organization. And after going through his career with a record of 22-3-1, some have suggested that if he'd gotten into the sport earlier, he didn't debut until he was 30, he could have been the greatest of all time. Cormier was recently inducted into the UFC's Hall of Fame thanks to claiming titles in two different divisions, and now appears in the UFC commentary booth alongside Rogan and John Anik. Joe Rogan, on the other hand, was never actually fought in the MMA octagon. The comedian and owner of one of the most popular podcasts in the world started off his martial arts journey as a Taekwondo competitor in his early years, becoming a US champion. He has since taken up Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, becoming a black belt in the process. Thanks to his love for martial arts, he bagged his role with the UFC back in 1997 and was initially employed to interview fighters before and after their fights backstage. Of course, his knowledge of the sport was such that he was promoted to the commentary booth and has since become one of the best loved martial arts commentators in the world, thanks to his in-depth knowledge of the game. Who is your favorite commentator right now? So, where did the beef start? Stay with us to find out. Ferguson was speaking recently after being flatlined by Michael Chandler at UFC 274 a few weeks back and didn't seem impressed with Rogan or Cormier. Of course, the commentators just call it how they see it and have never really appeared to pick on Ferguson more than anyone else. But we guess Tony sees it differently. El Kukui addressed the pair on Twitter after his fourth straight octagon defeat, but the feud stems back to his December 2020 fight with Charles Oliveira, when Ferguson claimed the pair didn't know what they were talking about. He said, when Joe Rogan was talking, it looked like I didn't know what the hell I was doing. Yet I was more active on the bottom than Dustin Poirier against Charles Oliveira, and I didn't hear one word talking about how bad his jiu-jitsu was. The commentators are talking like they don't know what the F they're talking about, and they're making guys like me sound like I'm an idiot for one, and two, that I'm out here and I don't know what the F I'm doing. I don't think anybody has ever questioned Tony's jiu-jitsu, especially not the commentators who are of course well-placed to comment on what they see, one being a former champion and the other being a BJJ black belt under Eddie Bravo. What do you make of Ferguson's performance against Oliveira. Next up, what has he said recently? Tony again wasn't happy after his recent fights with Chandler and has reignited his beef with the UFC's commentary team, calling out Cormier for the towel gate incident in which he initially missed weight, but then mysteriously dropped 1.2 pounds in a couple of minutes at the UFC 210 weigh-ins. Ferguson referenced the incident after his own UFC 274 defeat, which prompted DC to plead with Ferguson to please stop and go and tuck your head in a hole somewhere. But Tony wasn't done there. He explained what he thought about Rogan and Cormier in another recent outburst, saying, I always give props to John and Nick because he would always kind of speak up for me, but they, Cormier and Rogan, don't mind bagging on me. I'm the only person that told Joe no for his podcast. I have my reasons for it, but I got a lot of respect for Joe and what he's done for the sport and for himself, but you know, I'm not best friends with him. I don't gotta be best friends with him. Same thing with Cormier. Given the fact that Joe Rogan Experience podcast is the most listened to podcast in the world, we're sure he's not short on guest ideas, but it's sad that Tony has decided to take offense at some perceived slight. When asked by Ariel Helwani about the Rogan podcast, Ferguson replied, it's because I know my value, bro. Somebody's gonna have to pay me for that. What do you make of Tony's words? Henry Cejudo has had his say about who Tony might fight next. Stay with us. Of course, Henry Cejudo has recently been speaking about Ferguson, as he seemingly does every other fighter on the UFC roster, and he has suggested that the fight that could make most sense for him is Conor McGregor. The Irishman is coming off a long layoff due to injury, but Cejudo believes that Tony and Conor could be a fight the UFC looks to make when he arrives. Ferguson himself will have to take some time out, at least six months, after his brutal knockout loss to Chandler. 
but Triple C, as he likes to call himself, has suggested that when he's back, this is the fight that makes most sense for both fighters. He said, I like the Tony Ferguson fight for him. I think that fight is winnable for Connor. The fight is definitely winnable, but it is also winnable for Ferguson, as McGregor has been a threat at the top of the lightweight division for years now, and Cejudo suggested that if he does keep taking the high-level competitors, he will only keep getting hurt. Henry then pointed out to the fact that Connor has a lot of flaws that he's still not fixing. Before claiming that he still isn't sold on the McGregor hype, Cejudo concluded his rant by imploring Connor to learn how to wrestle properly and stop getting taken down so often. Before suggesting Connor has gone too hard too early, what do you think of Cejudo's comments? Next up, could a fight with Dustin be on the cards for Tony? Let's discuss. Whilst some have suggested that Tony needs to take a back seat for a while and recover fully from the Chandler knockout, Tony Ferguson sees it a little differently. Speaking earlier this week, the Californian outlined his plans to take on Dustin Poirier when he returns from his medical ban. It is no secret either that Dustin Poirier is looking for a fight as he appears to call out a different fighter every week, and Ferguson believes Poirier could be the perfect matchup, style-wise. El Kakui is apparently looking at making some pretty significant changes in his training regime and is reportedly looking for a new team, but he's not looking to take an easier fight with someone further down the rankings, which he should be commended for. Ferguson has never backed away from tough opponents and has spoken this week about the diamond, saying, I would love to be able to fight Dustin Poirier. Obviously, he likes to go stand-up. A stand-up battle wouldn't be bad. Some might say the last thing Ferguson needs is another stand-up battle after having his brain rattled so viciously by Chandler. But who are we to suggest who he should fight? Ferguson then revealed that he would let the UFC know when he's ready to go again. But the organization would do well to leave him out for the rest of the year, in our opinion. And finally, Michael Chandler's KO of Ferguson has been graded by front kick royalty. Stay tuned. Lyoto Machida knows a thing or two about front kick KOs. The Brazilian scored two highlight reel front kick KOs in his career against Randy Couture and Vitor Belfort, which puts him in a better position than virtually everybody to grade Chandler's recent effort. In a recent interview, The Dragon explained that martial arts is, of course, an art, which can bring beautiful moments. He said, and like art, anything can come of it. You look at a painting from Leonardo da Vinci and sometimes you don't see beauty, but someone with more sensibility than you will be able to see something there. This is so beautiful. Look at what this person thought. He went on to compare it with Chandler's kick, saying, it's the same thing with a kick like this. I look at martial arts in a holistic way, you know? Did it work well? So it's a 10. Wow, high praise indeed. Machida then explained that it doesn't have to look pretty. It's the effectiveness that counts. And we would agree, given the fact that Lyoto has scored two famous knockouts in this exact way. What did you guys make of his comments? As usual, thanks for tuning in today, and remember to join us next time for some more fun and games. And why not do us a solid by liking and sharing today's video, as well as subscribing to our channel. Bye, guys.